Hi, sixth graders. Um, we are going to continue working on multiplying fractions this week. Um, if you'll look back in your notebook, we've already taken notes on multiplying fractions by whole numbers. We have taken notes on multiplying fractions by fractions, and you practiced that and took the quiz. And so today's notes are going to continue with multiplying. And we're going to be multiplying mixed numbers. And this should be on page 9. So we're multiplying mixed numbers um, today. So if you will remember what a mixed number is, a mixed number is any whole number and fraction combination, right? So an example would be 2 and 1 fourth. And remember, we can actually change a mixed number into an improper fraction. So remember, we did this a couple weeks ago. We can use what we call the MAD method, that's multiply, add, and then denominator, in order to change a mixed number into an improper fraction. So if I wanted to change this mixed number into an improper fraction, I would first remember multiply the denominator by the whole number. 4 times 2 gives me 8. Then I would add across the top, so I would add that number to the number that's already there on the top, so 8 plus 1 is 9. That would be my new numerator, and then D stands for the denominator, so the denominator stays the same. So these two things are equal. 2 and 1 fourth is equal to, four, uh, to 9 fourths. Um, and again, mixed numbers have the whole number in fractions. Improper fractions are top-heavy fractions. And so we're going to need to know this skill today while we multiply mixed numbers. Um, so let's just look at an example of what it would look like to multiply mixed numbers. So our first, and actually we're going to do five examples. So if you want to kind of leave enough space at the top here to do an example, and then split the rest of your paper into four equal pieces, we'll put an example here at the top, and then we'll do four more examples at the bottom. So leave yourself some space at the top, and then examples on the bottom. So Example number one, I'm going to multiply one half times two and three fourths. Now, um, notice that this is a plain fraction, right? But this is a mixed number, so we're dealing with numbers that are mixed here. Now, the most common mistake, so this is a mistake. This would be a mistake. The most common mistake would be to look at this and say, oh, well, there's a big 2, so the whole number must be 2. And then uh, multiplying, so I would multiply 1 times 3 and get 3, and 2 times 4 and get 8, and I'm done. This is a mistake. This is the most common mistake that we make when we're multiplying mixed, uh, mixed numbers by any kind of fraction. Um, we do not simply get to multiply straight across here, um, and I'll show you why this answer ends up being wrong. What we must do is we must change our mixed number, so we're going to be focusing here, we must change this mixed number into an improper fraction. Because remember last week, we know how to do this. Let me grab a sheet of paper here real quick. We know how to do one-half times some other fraction, right? We know that we would just multiply the top numbers together, multiply the bottom numbers together. Um, and so that's what we want to be able to do, multiplying fractions. Well, we can change this mixed number into an improper fraction. So let's think about what that would be. So I'm going to use the multiply and add method. So 4 times 2, again, is 8. In this case, we're adding 3. So 8 plus 3 is 11. And so we actually get... 11 over 4, that's this mixed number changed into an improper fraction. So we just all we did was translate 2 and 3 fourths into an improper fraction. Now, of course, we're multiplying that by 1 half. And now, notice, I am able to just multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So the biggest um, key to multiplying with mixed numbers is we have to change mixed numbers into improper fractions. This step is key. Change mixed numbers into 
improper fractions. I don't know why I lowercased the I and <laughs> uppercase the F. Doesn't really matter, but this is the key. You have to change mixed numbers into improper fractions because now we can multiply straight across, right? We can do, so let's finish this problem, uh, 1 times 11 is 11, 2 times 4, which is 8, and now I'm actually not done because this is still top heavy, so we are going to have to do an extra step in the end to change this back into a mixed number, so I'm going to divide 8 goes into 11 one whole time because 1 times 8 is 8, and when you subtract that off, you get 3. So the final answer here is one whole time with 3 eighths left over. So I'm going to squeeze that in here. 1 and 3 eighths would be my final answer. Now notice that's different than this, right? Now we did get the 3 eighths part, and that just actually happened. Um, that's not always going to work out as nicely as that. But um, notice that the whole number is different, right? And so we do not get the correct answer by simply ignoring the whole number and multiplying straight across. Again, key here, change mixed numbers into improper fractions. So let's look at another example. So we'll call this example number two. And let's do three and two fifths times one fifth. Three and two fifths times one fifth. So again, the first thing you should do when you see a problem that has a mixed number is we want to identify that mixed number and we want to change it into an improper fraction. So automatically we're going to multiply and add. 5 times 3 gives me 15. We're going to add 15 plus 2 across the top. That gives me 17. And then on the bottom we get 5. Keep 5 on the bottom. Times and then we bring down this fraction. It's not a mixed number, so it's good to go. Now we're ready to multiply. Now that we have two fractions, we're ready to multiply straight across. So 17 times 1 on the top gives me 17. 5 times 5 on the bottom gives me 25. And lucky for us, 17 is actually a prime number. So you could think through what will divide 17. Nothing other than 17. And 17 does not divide 25. So in this case, we're actually finished. There's nothing else to do there. So again, big news, change right here, change the mixed number into an improper fraction first, which is what we did to get to this step, multiply straight across like we were doing last week. Let's try example number three. Um, let's do four and one half times two seven. Now, if you want to pause the video here and try this one on your own and then maybe check yourself, that might be a good idea. So go ahead and pause the video if you want to try it on your own. And now we'll check it. So again, I identify my mixed number, multiply, add. 2 times 4, we've done this before, is 8. Actually, yeah, uh, 8 plus 1 is 9. I was going to say that feels exactly like what we did up here, only our denominator was 4. Here, our denominator is going to be 2, right? So. 9 halves is the same thing as 4 and a half times, and then I'm going to bring this fraction down. There's nothing to do to it. It's not a mixed number. Multiply straight across. 9 times 2 gives me 18. 2 times 7 gives me 14. Uh, that's top heavy. 18 is bigger than 14, so I'm going to have to divide. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to have to change it back into a mixed number. 14 will go into 18 one time, because 1 times 14 is 14. If I subtract, 8 minus 4 is 4, 1 minus 1 is 0, so my remainder is 4. So the mixed number, if we go around the world, will be 1 and 4 over 14. Um, but now, we feel like maybe we're done, but we notice this fraction right here. 4 and 14 are both even numbers. And so this fraction can actually simplify. They're both even, so we know they'll divide by 2. We're going to deal with the fraction. Whole number is going to come down. We don't have to change it, but 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. So our final answer there is 1 and 2 7. So initial step, again, where we had to change into an improper fraction. Other than that, it's the same as what we were doing last week. Multiply across. And then we have to do some work at the end if it's top heavy and if it can be 
simplified. All right, let's try one where we have two improper fractions. So let's try, for example, number four. Let's try one and one third times two and five sixths. All right, let's try this one. So in this case, we actually have two improper fractions, right? So we have uh, one and one third and two and five six. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to change both of these into improper fractions. So we're gonna use multiply and add method on both of them. Uh, three times one is three plus one more is four. So that's four thirds. And then over here, we've got six times two is 12. Uh, 12 plus 5 gives me 17, and then 6 on the bottom. All right. Now, we're going to multiply those together. The numbers can get a little big here, so you've got to be really careful. Uh, 4 times 17. I don't have my 17s memorized, so I'm going to go off to the side, and I'm going to multiply. 7 times 4 gives me eight, uh, 28. Carry the 2. 4 times 1 is 4, and add 2 more. So that's 68 on the top. And then on the bottom, we have 3 times 6, which is 18. 3 times 6, which is 18. Now, again, those numbers got pretty big. 68 is, of course, larger than 18, so I'm going to have to do some work with dividing. So I'm going to need to figure out how many times does 18 go into 68? How many whole times? Well, again, I don't know my 18s, but we can count up by 18. So 18 is first. 18 plus 18 more would give me 36. So that's not quite to 68 yet. If I add 18 more, that gives me 14, carry the 1, and that's going to give me 54. Getting closer. Let's add 18 more. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, carry the 1. That gives me 72, so I'm well over uh, 68, correct? So how many times did 18 go in? There's 1, 2, 3. 3 times, because 3 times 18 gave me 54. And when I subtract that, 8 minus 4 gives me 4. 6 minus 5 gives me 1. And so my fraction is three holes, it went in three whole times with 14 out of 18 left over. But of course, 14 and 18 are both even numbers. And so I can do just like I did before, because they're both even, I know they will divide by two. Whole number stays the same, but 14 divided by two gives me seven, and 18 divided by two gives me nine. So my final answer here is three and seven ninths. Now, the numbers are going to get bigger when you have two mixed numbers. And again, when you have two mixed numbers, we have to change them both into improper fractions before we can multiply across. There may be several steps in the end to, again, make sure that you change it back into a mixed number and also simplify if you can. All right, let's do one more. Um, and this time, so for example, number five, I want to do a whole number. So two, just the number two, times, and we're going to do a fraction. So let's do two and one-fifth. All right. Um, so again, it would be real easy to just look at this, and this is a very common mistake. It would be very easy for someone to look at this and say, two times two is four, and carry on the one-fifth. So the answer is four and one-fifth, right? Is it four and one fifth? That's a common mistake, but we know at this point now that there's a mixed number and that mixed number has to change into improper fraction. So I'm actually gonna just bring this whole, this first whole number down, the two times. I'm gonna use the multiply and add method. So five times two gives me 10. And then across the top, 10 times one gives me 11. Keep the denominator as five. Now, think way back to last week when we did whole numbers times fractions. How did we multiply a whole number times a fraction? Well, remember we put the whole number over one to keep everything lined up, and I multiplied the whole number times the numerator. And then I kept the denominator the same. The one helps me remember to do that. 
So we're going to do 2 times 11, which is 22. And then the bottom is going to, of course, stay as a 5. 5 times 1 is 5. Now, that's top heavy, so we have to do our little extra work here at the end. We're going to do 22 divided by 5. 5 goes into 22, 5, 10, 15, 20. It goes in 4 times because 4 times 5 is 20. Subtract 22. Uh, 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we get 2 left over. So we go around the world. Our whole number is 4. Our fraction, whole number is 4. Fraction is going to be 2 fifths. And of course, 2 fifths is already simplified because 2 is an even number. 5 is not. 2 will only divide by 2. 5 will not divide by 2. And so we are finished because it cannot be simplified. So the biggest thing you need to remember, again, we drew it in this cloud up here, is change all of your mixed numbers into improper fractions as you're practicing this. Please send me an email if you would like some extra tutoring or need some extra examples um, because this is probably the most involved process that we've done so far as far as multiplying fractions. Good luck on your practice.